Hello, and welcome to my second channel, Elite Shopping Cart. Um, I actually have another main channel called Missiles Against Bats. If you're not familiar with it, maybe you want to go check it out. Um, this is my second channel where, rather than doing Let's Plays, I just put up any, you know, whatever sorts of videos I like. Um, in this case, I'm going to be doing some instructional videos on the video game Life and Death 2, The Brain. Um, so I've noticed a bit of a lack of um, instructional videos regarding this game on YouTube, so I've decided to put some up because some of these operations are a bit tricky and the in-game instructions can be a tad vague sometimes. So I'm going to go through the three operations in this game in as great detail as I possibly can. This is the first operation you encounter, the subdural hematoma, which is by far the easiest and quickest of the operations. So I'm going to start out this video by explaining the instrumentation and tools you have available and exactly what each one of them does. So you can see I have the video paused right now. My assistant is asking me if I'm taking a break, which I am, sort of, in any case. Starting at the top left corner, right here you've got your respirator, which is related to the PCO2 meter here. This monitors the concentration of carbon dioxide in the patient's bloodstream. It's currently at 32. I don't know what units those are in, but 32 is the normal. If it's Sometimes it will start to rise above 32, in which case you need to put the respirator up to high. If that number gets above about, I think, 45, the patient will die. Um, once it gets back down to 32, turn it back down to low. If you forget to turn it back down to low, it will continue dropping below 32. And if it gets down to a certain point, I don't know what the lower threshold is, like 20 or something, the patient will also die. So, you know, don't let that happen. Then you've got, you know, time here. It's how long you've taken. Blood pressure. Um, you don't want to let that drop too low. You can prevent blood pressure from dropping by keeping blood in the IV. The IV is down here. I'll explain that in more detail later. Um, you need to keep blood in the IV. If the patient is bleeding, that will prevent blood pressure from dropping. If it drops too low, I think below around 80 over 50, although I'm not sure about that lower cutoff, um, then what you need to do is inject some dopamine, which will kick the patient's blood pressure back up. Um, here you've got the EKG, the electrocardiogram, that monitors the patient's um, heart rhythms. This is showing a normal heart rhythm. There's a hump on the left, a hump on the right, which you can't see right now, and then this complex in the center goes up and then down and then back to the middle. That's a normal um, heart rhythm. There are two arrhythmia that appear in this game. One is called bradycardia, which is effectively a weak heartbeat. Um, that's indicated by the two lumps on either side and then just a flat line in the middle. That is treated by injecting the patient with atropine. I'll explain the syringes a bit later. Um, the other uh, arrhythmia is called PVC, which stands for premature ventricular contraction. Um, and that's denoted on the EKG by the two humps on either side. And then in the middle, it just goes down and then back up to the center. Um, that's treated with lidocaine. So... Um, oh yeah, these guys up here, you've got your um, microscope and ultra scan, ultrasound scan. Those are not used in this operation. Those are used in the aneurysm and brain tumor operations. And the exit button, in the event that you flip out and decide you can't do the surgery and want to just leave, um, not generally recommended. It just ends the surgery is all it does. Um, so these tools down here, we've got... Um, your drill, that's used for drilling burr holes in the patient's skull. We only have that one bit right now, but in the other operations we have access to a couple of different types of bits, which I'll explain in more detail in those videos. Um, it's basically just used for drilling holes in the patient's skull. You've got your scalpel, used for cutting things, of course. You've got your cauterizer, which is used for um, stopping tissue bleeders. Your bone wax here, when you start cutting or drilling into the bone, you will get bone bleeders. The bone wax is used for stopping those. You've got the irrigator, which in this operation serves to um, lubricate the drill so that the drill does not overheat the patient's brain. In other operations, when the brain or the dura mater are exposed, it will be used to um, keep them wet so they don't dry out. If they dry out, the patient will die. Um, here you've got your surgical hooks. That's used for keeping the skin flap up and out of your way. 
Um, you've got your Rainey's Clips, that's for treating bleeders at the skin when you're first incising the scalp. And you've got your Suction Hose right here, which in this operation is used for sucking out the hematoma. I, maybe I should explain exactly what a subdural hematoma is. It's basically um, a collection of blood um, outside of the blood vessels. In this case, it's subdural, which means it's below the dura mater, which is the outer layer of... Um, of membrane surrounding and protecting the brain. Um, you know, a for example, a hematoma under the skin is colloquially known as a bruise. In this case, it's um, above the brain, below the dura mater, which um, causes problems. So we need to remove it, and we do that by sucking it out with this little suction hose. Um, this right here is your urine bag. Actually, I'll explain that in a moment. That has to do with the um, mannitol. Uh, let's see, I'll have to unpause it for a bit. In this upper drawer, you've got your surgical drape that's used for um, covering the covering everything except for the operating area. It keeps other areas clean or whatever. Um, you've got your stitches that's used for um, suturing things closed. In this operation, the only reason we use it is for um, suturing the drain to the patient's scalp. This is the drain here. We will be placing that in the burr hole after removing the hematoma to allow any excess blood collection to drain out while the patient is healing. You've got your iodine solution for disinfecting the scalp, soap, and gloves. These are the very first things you need to use in the operation in that order. Wash your hands, then put on the gloves. Um, you've got your um, scalp staples. That's used for closing up the patient's scalp. Um, once you've put 10 of those into the patient's scalp, the operation is finished, unlike in Life and Death 1, where you have to explicitly start and stop the anesthetics. And then you've got some cotton swabs here, which are used for um, removing excess blood. Close that. Second drawer. These are your fluids and syringes. These fluids here go in the IV bag. Blood. You want to keep blood in the IV bag, typically, um, at any time the patient is bleeding, um, that will prevent the blood pressure from dropping. Saline and glucose, um, I'm not sure what the difference between those two are. Those are just uh, generic fluids you can put in the IV. Um, if somebody knows what the difference between those two is, maybe leave a comment um, on this video telling me, because I don't know. And then you've got your mannitol, um, and that is used in the event that the patient's urine output starts to drop. This little bag here shows the urine output. If the um, urine level starts to drop, you want to put mannitol in the IV. If it drops too low, the patient will die of renal failure, which is never good. And another quick note about the IV, you must keep some fluid in the IV at all times. If the IV is ever allowed to empty, the patient will die. I'm not sure why I assume of like an air embolism or something. I don't know exactly. And then finally, you've got your syringes down here. N is for nitroprusside. That's not used in this operation, but later it will be used to induce hypotension in the patient so that you can cut through the patient's dura mater without them bleeding to death. Um, hypotension is uh, just low blood pressure. B is antibiotics. You always inject that in every operation before you begin incising to reduce the uh, risk of bacterial infection. You've got your dopamine, that's used to um, raise the patient's blood pressure in the emergency case that blood pressure gets too low. Obviously, you do not want to use this after having injected nitroprusside. Um, atropine and lidocaine, like I said, are used for treating bradycardia and PVC heart rhythms, respectively. Um, and I guess the last little bit here I need to cover is the spinal tap down here. We won't be using that. Um, but in later operations, it is used in case the patient's intracranial pressure is a little bit too high. Um, it's basically used for removing small amounts of cerebrospinal fluid to relieve pressure on the brain. Um, I'll explain that a little bit in other videos. Um, but with that, now that I've explained anything, I believe we can just go ahead and get started with the actual operation itself. So let's try that, shall we? On pause. You'll notice I've turned the sound off because the sound tends to fuck this game up. Um, so. I just keep the sound off, it makes it easier. Anyway, wash up, put the gloves on. This is a subdural hematoma on the right side of the brain, so we need to rotate the patient's head so that the right side is exposed. And now we, yeah, keep my eyes on what I'm doing. Screw off, Nurse Helperin. Anyway, you want to cover the patient's head with iodine, and now place the drape. Next, we inject the antibiotics, like I said before. And now we are 
ready to begin incising. So cut along this line. You have to be pretty precise with it. Um, just go about a third of the way and then stop. Ugh, God damn it. Hold on. Uh, the mouse controls in this game are not very good. But anyway, stop the bleeders with these Rainies clips. Like so. And then continue on. Let me reposition myself a bit here. And continue on from where you left off on the incision. There we go. Close up those bleeders. Oh, the patient's blood pressure is dropping. I forgot to put blood in the IV. That's not a huge deal for now. Uh, no, don't put iodine in the IV. That'd be a terrible idea. There, blood in the IV. That's good. Now we continue incising. Ah, damn it! Okay. Like I said, you have to be very precise. I'm also working in a um, minimized window here instead of full screen like I'm used to, so it might be a bit difficult. But anyway. So now, this part is optional, but I like to wipe away the bleeders with the cotton swab. And now, just click on the scalp to raise it like so. And there is our skull fracture. That's indicative of the hematoma, which is typically caused by some sort of blunt trauma. So now, raise that out of the way with the clips. Again, optional, but I like to keep the... Uh, blood away like so and now put your irrigator to lubricate the drill and we will be drilling right on the center of that fracture click your mouse button and then stop drilling as soon as it breaks through like that take care of the bone bleeder with the bone wax now you can remove the irrigator and make a small incision inside the burr hole that orange tissue below is the dura mater so we cut a little hole in Dura Mater to access the hematoma, grab your suction, and suck it out. As soon as it turns white again, you're done, and you need to release. Now I put the drain in the burr hole and suture that to the scalp with a little suture there. Now we're ready to close up, so just remove those hooks, remove the Rainey's clips. This part's a little bit tedious, but it has to be done. We don't want to leave those on the patient's scalp. That might be a tad uncomfortable and I imagine would prevent the um, incision from healing in any case. Yes, the drain should remain sticking out of the patient's head. I know it looks weird, but that is what you need to do. It will be removed later. And now, um, where am I? Here we are. Put 10 staples in the patient's scalp, and then you're done. Congrats, Doc. You are finished with the operation. All right, great hematoma operation, Doctor. You've landed yourself a place on the honor roll. Congratulations. Hooray. We're finished with the hematoma operation. Like I said, that was the quick and easy one. Um, the other two are much more difficult, but I will get into those um, later. Um, so, if you enjoyed this video, maybe you want to check out my other channel, Missiles Against Bats. I do Let's Plays over there. They're not very good, admittedly, but... If you want to check them out, I wouldn't have a problem with that. In any case, that's all for now. I will see you guys later.